The Human Rights Council has just finished its 18th session today, and in many respects it has been a step back. The 16th and 17th session in, June, in March and June have been very successful in terms of improving the Council's response to urgent and chronic human rights situations. The 18th session has been a step back in that regard because the Council has failed to take strong action on a, a number of serious human rights situations. In particular, the Human Rights Council has failed to take a strong resolution on Yemen. We're actually very disappointed with the outcome on Yemen this session. While we were very happy that it was discussed, it was on the agenda of the Human Rights Council along with other countries. So Syria was on the agenda, Yemen was on the agenda, Libya, Sudan, they were on the agenda, but nonetheless the outcomes were weak across the board pretty much, and especially with regards to Yemen, where several human rights defenders came to the Council hoping that there would actually be an outcome and that their voices would be heard. And instead you have a procedural decision, a procedural resolution that does not open the doors for accountability in any way and does not include any actual action or follow-up. So we're very disappointed about that. The Human Rights Council has also adopted fairly weak outcomes on Sudan and South Sudan with very little consideration for the serious and ongoing uh, human rights violations in those areas. The failures on Yemen unfortunately took place in a context of other failures of this council this session, including Sudan and South Sudan, where the mandate on Sudan was actually downgraded from an item 4 mandate, which actually looks at the human rights situation in the country, to a item 10 mandate, which is merely technical and capacity building oriented. So that was a downgrade of this very important mandate at a very important time. And as for South Sudan, we were hoping, and human rights defenders from Sudan were hoping for an actual mandate on the country. And they'd been pleading that we know the situation in our country, we think there should be more intense and intimate follow-up. And instead what you have is just a very thin and weak resolution that doesn't involve any actual engagement of the UN in any way. The Human Rights Council has done nothing on Sri Lanka. It has failed to respond to the Secretary General's panel of experts report on the situation in Sri Lanka and has not addressed the issue. Well, Farmasia continues to be very much disappointed by the fact that the Council hasn't been able to uh, fulfill its responsibilities and accountability issues in Sri Lanka. Um, as you may know, the Secretary General's panel of experts report on accountability issues in Sri Lanka had been transmitted to the President of the Council on the first day of this session. Um, and meanwhile, the government of Sri Lanka maintained um, its very strong defensive against uh, this report by publicly denouncing it um, and its contents, as well as uh, sending a very high-level delegation to Geneva this time around. Not only the outcome on country situations was weak, but also the debates that the Human Rights Council had at this current session were not reflective of the seriousness of those situations. This is in particular the case of the discussion on Belarus where member states in the Council focused on the politicization, the so-called politicization that this discussion represents, on deploring the approach that they call naming and shaming, rather than seriously engaging with the, with the human rights situation in Belarus. The Human Rights Council has managed to find positive outcomes on a number of thematic issues at this session. In particular, this includes the establishment of a new special rapporteur on truce, justice, reparation and guarantees of non-recurrence. I think most importantly the mandate is established in a way that aims at restoring the rule of law so as to be able to move forward but without ignoring uh, violations of the past. So it assists human rights defenders by uh, making clear that uh, violations of human rights and international humanitarian law are not to be ignored, that there will still be a forum for redress of these matters moving forward. The Human Rights Council has finally taken a step to more systematically address the issue of reprisals. Reprisals, harassment and intimidation against persons because they cooperate with the UN and its human rights mechanisms has been uh, an issue that NGOs and human rights activists have pressed the Council to address for a number of years. 
Now, moving, moving forward and in, in view of the 19th session in March 2012, there are a number of important country and thematic elements that will be addressed in March. This includes in particular the situations in Yemen, uh, Libya, Syria, but also the first report of the Special Rapporteur on Iran, reports by the High Commissioner on Colombia, on Nepal and Afghanistan. But the March session will also be the scene of a, an unprecedented panel discussion on human rights, sexual orientation and gender identity. This will be an opportunity for human rights activists, states and UN agencies to discuss how they can best end violence and discrimination against people based on their sexual orientation and gender identity.